Okay, that should be... Let's move back. Uh, let me quickly check on my Twitch stream. Yeah, yep, yep, we're back. Good, yeah, sorry about that, my OBS crash. Uh, it's, it's the first time I've seen yours crash, but it's on a laptop, so... I would expect you're still missing your your PC at home and your separate rig, so. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, well, I mean, I don't mind the non-gaming too much. <laughs> I do have a cat, yeah. after all. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah true, true. Anyway. So, you have to go from the start, or? No, we just, uh, well, <laughs> we just started anyway, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, new corner and half, uh, half their building pieces. Added the new corner and half stair pieces to existing building sets, and you can now also sell red exotics for rent. Oh, that's a nice one. I like that subtle one because I do need more ren, so uh, that that becomes way more useful. Yeah, especially because in an open yeah, world, it, you can mine. Exotics through the hills. Well, that you have, and uh, realistically, one of the biggest uh, limitations at the moment for me, realistically, was actually Ren because I play so infrequently and I haven't really rerun missions to accumulate it, but it is still a currency that you need to utilize for various purchases. So, yep. yeah. So, you already had the option to confer purple exotics. Interact. Yeah, uh, but I felt that that was a waste, realistically. Yeah, and earning ren. Well, you can do the simple quest, which is like giving you thirty uh, ren a piece or something. Uh, it will take too long to grind. Uh, okay. They didn't mention what the ratio is, right? It oh wait, there it is. It's coming in. Yeah, it's coming in. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, but yeah, now you can uh, yeah, like that. Uh, if you want Ren, you do missions. Of uh, course, yeah, the simple quest isn't really working. Or you convert to purple exotics, but now you can also convert to red exotics. And <laughs> from the last time you logged into my main open world, my uh, Prometheus open world, you should have gotten a ton. Of, I think I did, yeah. So. You should have gotten a ton of uh, red exotics, so. Yeah, yeah, pretty sure I have. Right. So, let's kick off, shall we? Now, this week's update continues our trend of introducing small improvements and new content from our recently concluded project clinic. Now, two features deserve special mention. The new corner stair pieces also, it changes to crafting shotgun ammo. More about that below. Now, our null tech work has also progressed since the conclusion of Project Clinic. We also have a small update on this null sector below. First, I have a quick look at the notable improvements. Uh, improved performance by removing tick costs from the supply networks and reducing building base tick. This is going to be a big one, especially for bigger bases. Okay. Well, I'm not sure what the building base tick is. If, if that's just like a poll of the building pieces to still register that they're there or exactly what it refers to, I'm not sure. Uh, so, power and water networks, mm. uh, like they uh, they check like how much power is produced and how much is consumed, yeah. it's the same for water. Uh, so, if every tick is doing a whole calculation. Yeah. And the bigger the networks become, the more uh, performance drop you get. Yep, so they just increased the the latency between ticks. I think so, yeah. Well, removing the tick cost entirely, well, obviously there's still going to be some calculation regularly. <laughs> yeah. 
It should be. But they'd say reducing the build, uh, the building base tick. So that is AKA, yeah, yeah uh, but then. structural integrity checks. I reckon. Yeah. Um, so less frequent calculations, most likely. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, another, the next one, general lighting optimizations have been implemented to improve performance, especially for you, uh, using an AMD GPU, I think, is going to be. Well, I know that the fire used to have uh, issues, and uh, I'm pretty sure it was definitely something light orientated, but in the previous patch notes, they discussed that they were going to change something again. So whether or not they broke something again, I wasn't able to determine. So, but always uh, as you mentioned before. Conversations, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you can now drop items into the medical schedule, seat pouch, and farmer's bag by dragging an item on top of them. This is nice. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Yeah, that, that made actually sense. I'm surprised I wasn't added in to begin with, but I can also see how it was overlooked. So. Nice addition. Yeah, I definitely like this one. Uh, so you don't mm -hmm. have to like right click, open, and then drag it in. Yeah. You just drag it. No, you just drag it into it. No, but as a pouch should be. So, yeah. Exactly. Now, when you have a medical schedule, a seat pouch, farmer's bag, etc., in your hot bar, you can right click to open it. This is going to save time, especially if you're in the middle of a battle uh, and you need, uh, you need some medicine. If you have the medical schedule on your hotbar, we'll quickly scroll to it or press the number, uh, right click, and you can straight away, so you don't have to go through your uh, open inventory, right click the schedule and open it, and only then you can like straight away. It's still faster to put the extra medicine in your hotbar, true, true, but hey, at least they, uh, this way they reduce the number of, uh, of actions you have to do to actually open Especially the medical schedule. The rest of the pouch and farmer's bag, I'm like, meh, okay. But then, yeah, the medical one makes more sense, but that's also like to the degree where I think what would also have been nice is if they implemented control number uh, key bindings. Like with the medical pouch equipped to your hotbar, that you would be enabled to uh, bind additional keys to actually like hotbar items. like. Uh -huh. Mm. A lot yeah. of games use. So basically, go towards uh, multiple hotbars, kind of ish. Well, not so much, not so much multiple hotbar, but more like an extension of it. Or because you have it equipped, you get a special attachment. Like it's like usually would use Q to do like a radial menu that a lot of games recently have for various things. Uh -huh. So you would be able to do something like that, press Q, it sort of maybe do like a background overlay, which is the medical pouch, and then you would just move your mouse in the direction of the item that you want to use, and then it would just use it kind of stuff, reducing. The, so that would make it more like easier to access, even of that. But this is at least right-click, so the bag opens, great, you still need to move your mouse to the item that you want, not fumble it, and then use it. Uh -huh. So it should be fine. You can always add it in future upvote. They still haven't brought in my double Q for a fireplace cooking. So until that okay. gets fixed, because well, they so should. You put it in I'm not adding anything else. I did, yeah. Uh, when is the last time you check the status of that? Uh, I never checked the status since. Uh, you might want to do it. But yeah. Why? Did they do it? <laughs> I don't care what they told me. If they haven't done what I've suggested them to do, then I'm not going to give them more suggestions. But anyway, it's just an idea. But either way, it's, it's, we can carry on. It's, it's, it's a good item that they can drop it into the bags. And so that when you just right-click, if it is attached to your hotbar, that it just opens the bag. Great. Um, good idea. But they could expand on it to make it more uh, fluent or dynamic without having to trade on hey, copyright. At least it's more than we had before, so. That's true, small baby steps, you know, small baby steps. Exactly. So. Uh, let's see, updated the icons for fuel slots, so that if it accepts any container with a specific resource, 
a new symbol will be shown. This does include new items for all resource types, i.e. Uh, therazine, uh, biofuel, uh, wood, sticks, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, mm, one could say uh, once you've used uh, once you use it one or twice, you should know which kind of fuel it uses. But uh, uh, giving you well, uh, I would uh, info up front. Yeah. If I was a designer, I would sort of, when you open the interaction and you hover it over the slot where the fuel goes, it would have maybe like a very small uh, green uh, circle around or square around the item, which would work as a fuel source. Oh, that's if, you, if, if you look, for example, in a campfire or fireplace or whatever, there is already the uh, row of an icon, uh, yeah. icons at the bottom, like yes. this type of fuels are being accepted. I know what you mean, but it's also like, yeah, you know, where is it in my inventory? Because sometimes you overlook certain things and it's, you know, you don't need to show the small list of 20,000 icons underneath it because if it runs on pretty much anything, it will just be also. But anyway, it's, yes, Again. icon change, good. Again, future so. first. Yeah. So. So. Here, the new exotic change button has been added to convert red exotics into ren at a rate of 7 to 1. The Do you know what the purple was? 5 to 1. 5 to 1? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's actually surprising. So I was considering the fact that the red would be even lower, even though it's quote unquote well, higher. 5 to but, 1, yeah. as in you get 5 ren for one exotic. Yes, but you so get 7 to 1 or a red one. So uh, and for every purple, uh, sorry, every red exotic, red exotic, yeah. you get seven rent. So you get more rent from red than you get. From yes, purple. I know. That's uh, yes. I was expecting, considering the ease of the difference between the two, even though it is a higher tier, I would have expected it to be the same or even less than well, the purple exotic. Purple exotics you can get in Olympus and Sticks and Prometheus. Red exotics should be in Prometheus. So it, oh, you're right. It's also expansion locked as well, technically. Yeah. So, uh, unless, yeah. I mean, I have the expansion. Kinda, but, kinda, okay. but uh, purple exotics is more common than red. And you got a lot of red because I've done a lot of red exotics mining in order to try and unlock the uh, one exotic tree. How, how, much, how much red exotics do you get out of a node on average? Uh, never actually looked too much for red, I believe. Because uh, I think, uh, actually, yeah, I mean, it, it might be comparable between purple, but I mean, yeah, it's I'm like you said, exotic. you've really just mined the living, you know, earth out of the red exotic. So my, my, my opinion on the value or difficulty of it is definitely skewed because of it. So uh, yeah. don't forget, you just dropped in, you got uh, I helped you a few times, okay? You know, not like, you know, it's not like it. but don't forget, yeah. spent hours and hours and hours of running. No, you did. I know. I know you did. So, I'm not undermining your work. I'm just stating that once you have the equipment and the fact that red exotics are constantly respawning on your tile set and you know where they are, I would say that once you have it set up, it's not exactly rocket science versus the well, purple exotics. And we've got our hunting for it. The, the way that I used to gather it was you had to start a mission, have the equipment, run places, run across the entire map to get there and to put the things up to extract actually, a mission. For that exotics, was the last time I ran purples. Actually, for red exotics, mm -hmm. it's the same. Uh, with this difference, you can get the uh, purple exotics extractor as a workshop item. You don't have it for red ones. So if, you run, if you're in missions only for red exotics, every time you have to build up base set all the way up to tier four to make yeah, but I wouldn't. You can. I wouldn't. Yeah, no, true, but I wouldn't consider there are missions. I haven't seen what missions offer the red exotics, and you're right. Definitely for getting them is definitely harder, but with the ease of access to... Because I still think in your open world access, especially with yours and Prometheus, your access to red exotics is significantly higher than purple. I'm not it sure if that's a correct statement. I had the... 
the uh, quote unquote luck that I had a bugged tree which was pff, oh. fairly quickly reachable from my base. Oh, okay, uh, I, I have seen yeah, that's a bugged thing. purple uh, veins as well, although I managed to get them unbugged easier. Uh, but you would say that the purple exotic spawns on the meteorite event is more common than the red exotics. So on any given time, there are a max of three exotic nodes, yeah. nodes uh, available. Yeah. Um, in Prometheus, it's a maximum of two reds. You basically never get three reds. Unless you have the bug tree like I had. Yeah. But so sometimes it's uh, three purple, sometimes it's two purple, one red, sometimes it's one. Oh, okay. Red. Okay, I see what you mean. Purple right. still no, that's purple. Fine. That's right. Plus, don't forget, uh, every meteor event, it also uh, like has the, I believe, like 20% chance or so for the. Uh, Notice the purple exotic notice to respawn as well. Okay. Well, like I said, it's it's definitely it's it's good the fact that they can convert it. So that's that's perfectly well, yeah. fine. Yeah, but the red is more rare than the purple, hence you get okay. more rain. All right, all right, that's good. Portable yeah. biofuel tank. Yeah, well, that holds a hundred and fifty liters of biofuel. I'm not sure how much goes in the uh, in the normal biofuel can. That is the workshop variant, which holds more. Again, I don't have the numbers, but not a hundred fifty liters, not by long shot. Yeah, I I don't know why, but I think it's like a five liter tin. But you know, I might just be putting picture sizes and quantities in my mind. But yeah. But this is going to be ideal for uh, generators. True. I mean, uh, you're not going to use it for drills. The deep vein drills, uh, no. they run, uh, their inventory runs full before a bike runs out anyway. So you're not going to use uh, one of those, yeah. that or at least less useful. But especially for generators. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, generators, yeah, I would say, definitely. But it's also, it's a big item, so depending on the weight, it might or might not be, um, you know. Yeah. And I think it's the same thing as the water tank. It's probably preparing the big fuel, big water tank, big things in preparation for um, the, the, yeah. Because that's going to be a really resource scarce. Mm -hmm. And the update is reinforced and basic glass textures to remove some of the unattended fog effect shown in various situations. Good. Uh, ah, the upgrade function on repair hammers now includes the reinforced glass in the list. They promised it last week and it is mm -hmm. there now. Uh, explosive ammo crafting has been adjusted to use one volatile substance per five ammo instead of one on one. Cool, so it's going to be Makes cheaper sense. to make the explosive ammo, which I like a lot <laughs> because yep. I use a lot of explosive shotgun ammo. So, yeah. And the battery powered lanterns now will stay lit underwater. Yep. So, yeah, it's a good thing they're water tight. <clears throat> but, yeah, they now stay lit. Good, good. Uh, yeah, below we have an, another image of the uh, new corner right there, half there, whatever you want to call it. Yep. Looks like, like I said, the only thing that I find interesting is that when you split a wall section in half, there's not a lot of things you can put on that half height if there is a roof because here you can see that it's an open aired type of thing mm. but if you had to put something on the middle on the upper one and imagine that you know you just use it as like a shelving or something that oh maybe you could put chest but you can yeah you mean you have like this this, this uh half tile wide uh 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you bet, literally just put another one, maybe you could put chests in between them rather than the cabinets because not everyone can afford to have uh-huh. massive cabinets hanging on from their ceilings. What I'm more interested in is will we be able to place uh, railings on both sides of the stairs? Well, that's also a fair point. Will we be able to put half railings in place on the outer corners of the flat plateau? And if you look at the concrete roofing on top, the floor, you see there's a half, half a, a, a tile, a gap there. Are yeah. we going to get like half the railing pieces there to put in to prevent it from... It's a fair question. The, yeah, uh, it's a fair question. Yeah, yeah. Or else you're going to fall off. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it will be a couple of weeks before I can test it out. Yeah. And maybe by then they realize, oh, we should add this, and they have added it. We'll just have to wait and see. Yep. So, this week, corner stairs and half stairs. And these stairs allow for vertical traversal using the same space as a half piece, but in an L formation. This new piece should offer multiple new ways to build bases, allowing for more intricate designs. Yeah, like I said, you can now uh, go up uh, one uh, one wall height in one space, like in, in, in one uh, photon. Yeah. Especially nice for corners. Uh, it, and if you have like uh, low buildings, like low ceilings. On the other hand, I usually build my rooms too high, sometimes even three high. So I have to check how I can... Uh, get it like can I somehow make a spirally staircase so to say should be able to it'll be easier now to make one than before so yeah I'm not sure I will be able to uh, proper one yeah well again I'll uh, I'll test it out uh, in one of my open worlds once I'm back no, you should be able to, because it's literally just using one square um, to go up one layer without having yeah. to branch over across it so you enter back the way you can. So it's an efficient design, I think. Yeah, but yeah, if I want to go like two walls up, how can I do that proper? Nah, I, 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 do see, I do see possibilities, though. Yeah. Like I said, it's definitely... So I like it. Good for the and then again, I have to I have to do some testing uh, once I'm back home. Now these uh, corner stairs are available in refined wood and stone options, as friends on the existing ramp and half piece kits, as part as the uh, as part of the existing research sets. So you don't need uh, an extra blueprint. Uh, if you have the, the the ramp or the half pieces, you already get this uh, corner stairs. Currently only in wood and stone, but expect more material options for corner stairs in the future. Good. And another one this week, shotgun improvement. We have also revamped the way shotgun ammo is crafted. Now, instead of all shotgun ammo requiring the general ammo casings, a new item has been added, the shotgun cartridge. Now, these are crafted with one copper ingot and three epoxy to produce five shotgun cartridges. I believe the current uh, ammo casings is one iron ingot for five. So for shotgun, it will be one copper and three epoxy for five. Uh, yeah. so the shotgun floor recipe has been split out, so now you don't uh, need to craft, you, uh, to craft the uh, shotgun slug, so the explosive one, you don't have to craft it using the buckshot round. So up until now you first had to uh, craft the the normal, the backshot round, and then use the volatile substance to turn it into an explosive one. Those two have now been separated, both their own separate direct recipe. 
This change eliminates an unnecessary crafting step and streamlines the process of creating the MO. Cool, cool. And like I said, you, you craft like 200 normal busted shells and then 100 of them you turn into explosive ones. Now you craft straight away 100 explosive and 100 normal. Now the higher tier. Well, unless you have the talent for. The talent for. Crafting additional um, bullets. Yeah, the occasional like a five percent uh, chance to uh, craft an additional through through. Actually, let me tell you this. So the question is, uh, on my solo character, I have this talent. Now, when I turn a hundred uh, buckshot rounds into a hundred explosive ones, so I use a hundred buckshot and a hundred volatile substance, put mm -hmm. in the bench and say, okay, craft me a hundred. Explosive ones, I do get the occasional extra one without using uh, additional explosive, uh, sorry, without using any additional uh, big shield round or any additional uh, volatile substance. So, uh, first you craft the uh, big shield round, you say craft 200, you have the 5%, so you get like 210. You uh, convert 100 of them into explosives, so you have 110 backshot round left, you get the 5%, you get like 105 uh, explosive ones, so total you have 215 instead of the 200. Yeah. It was nice to do that this 5% uh, extra was like applied twice, once for the budget round and then subsequently for uh, making the explosive ones out of the budget round. So, was, yeah. so okay. yeah, you lose this by just a few. And it's going to make it easier uh, yeah. and faster to straight away to craft the uh, explosive rounds. Now the higher tier... Does make it simpler and makes more sense. Yeah, the higher tier ammo, like obsidian, cold steel, make incendiary, that is still crafted using buckshot, as it is fired as a buckshot round, but it just has an additional effect. Honestly, I very, very rarely use them. They're very situational. You can use explosives, you can use the... The, it's like the obsidian might be specific against a certain creature, the cold might be good against fire animals, the miasmic might be against biological animals, and cinnamon might be good against you know wild animals, but the explosive is good against everything, kind of. If I'm not mistaken, so. obsidian is best used in the Arctic, the cold steel in the swamp, and the miasmic in uh, Arctic. I believe it's but it's basically the explosive is if you want this thing that's moving to not move, then that's the one you go for. Exactly. So. Explosive is nice and generic. And also, uh, including like, yourself. You can, you can shoot the ground next to your target and still damage your target. So you can basically shoot around the corner. Yeah. And that is something I've, yeah. <laughs> I've used before. Anyway, the null sector. Now, as mentioned in the previous week, the null sector will include new map areas, new operations, a new exploration mechanic, new mutated creatures, and one new giant creature for owners of the New Frontiers expansion, or people who join their prospect. Uh, this new region, the North Sector, is not for the faint of heart. All the adjustments and differences uh, currently introduced are geared towards this being a hardcore survival challenge. So do make sure you enter it prepared. And uh, like I already said, uh, it is very resource scarce, so you have to basically carry everything with you. If you are interested in reading about what we plan to do with missions in the future, it uh, points you towards last week's patch notes. 
But yeah, uh, like last week we got the tier three and the tier four watering water cans with like a hundred fifty liters or so. Again, it is <laughs> because there is no water or close to no water in the north sector. Uh, you need a you need water to survive. And the uh, the S lines, I believe it was, is no ice being created in the deep freeze. So you can't use that as a source of uh, ice and this water either. So you have to carry everything with you. So now also the uh, and we we got the, the portable generator a couple of weeks ago. We now have the big fuel can. So yeah, there's gonna be uh, at least one uh, buffalo with cart. So we have uh, multiple uh, bulky slots. Yeah. It might be the entire team traveling with the cart to have enough bulk slots to bring everything. I don't know yet. Yeah, it would be fun. It's definitely gonna be interesting, that for sure. No, your support makes these updates possible. As usual, we have the uh, static pets bundle for a nice extra pets and extra uh, food and water trash, etc. Uh, extra animals, get zebras as mounts, or you get uh, you get the dynamic bundle complete set, like everything you don't have yet. And every time there's a new DLT or whatever for Apex, it will be added to the completed set. Yeah. Again, it's a dynamic one, currently 15% off. As soon as you add a new DLT, uh, you can have everything for it now. You just click yeah. complete the set and it will only charge you for the bit you don't have yet. Right, new content. Some changes to the open world drop collection. Not much extra info here, so not entirely sure what I changed there. I kind of yeah. did read something about um, yeah, new, boss uh, and like new open world, not so the current open world, you have to use the load option. Maybe that's what they uh, mean here. Added the ability to add a color to the storm fog, increase the clamp of fog density. Um, we don't, yeah, well, we do have like storm fog, uh, as in the desert. If you are in a storm in the desert, you really can't see much no more. Uh, Arctic tends to. Yeah. be less visible as well with all the snow and especially you yeah. go to the uh, to the normal sector you get like blizzards and so yeah. mm -hmm. uh, lightning rods will now div divert all nearby lightning strikes mm -hmm. previously it only divert the small strikes one. that were targeted against players and buildings but it was still hitting trees and bushes now it's the first all of them. Come yeah, on. so if you wanted to prepare, uh, if you wanted to prevent forest fires, just build a whole bunch of lightning uh, towers between uh, your forest. Yeah, right, I wonder, I'm not sure what the okay. range of the lightning uh, rods are. So the basic uh, lightning, the basic lightning rod previously had a range of 30 meters. They increased it to 50. Oh, I see that in the next line. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. initially it was destroyed after the very first hit. Now it takes three hits for it to break. Um, to be honest, okay. you, need the, the, uh, you need the copper uh, ingots for it in like one lighting hit. And it destroyed in like the second lighting hit, still hits your building and sets it on fire. So it wasn't really yeah. worth it. Pointless, yeah. At least now it can have three hits. However, the radius is increased. Mm. Uh, so the area 
of effect has more than tripled. And it, True. And it now defers all nearby lightning strikes. So the chance yeah. of it being hit <laughs> got way higher. True, but you probably build multiple. But the question is, is that it would hit the same one if, let's say, for example, you put two next to each other. Would it hit the first one and then cycle out because in the area there was a second one, or would it just continuously hit the same one and know. then destroy it? It will be interesting to kind of see if you could test something like that. Yeah, test it out in a hard mode open world with more severe storms. Uh, the platinum lighting was also, just uh, change it, the range from 30 meters to 80. Platinum. The platinum one, yeah. And can you, re can you repair a lightning rod or is it a you, you unused item? I don't know actually, you know. No, yeah. so that's definitely something you should uh, test when you're back. Definitely build like a platinum one and see if you could use a repair hammer to just hit it. Yeah. Now also, and this was actually new for me, uh, I, as in I did not know this, apparently the platinum lighting rod got destroyed after four hits. Still more than one. But yeah, that's uh, correct. Uh, they increased this to nine, though. Yeah, it's on the notes, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. If if it's going to, I mean, I'm not sure if it's still, you are using platinum ingots, so it is, it depends how many you're using, but yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's more expensive to build. The radius is even larger even bigger. than the base yeah. ones, so the chance of getting hit is <laughs> a lot bigger. So yeah, nine hits. It just depends on your resources, obviously. And also, if a platinum, a platinum lighting rod, you can actually hook up to your power network. It gives oh. this momentarily, momentary influx of power. Uh, I never uh, sat through a lightning storm to see whether or not my uh, lightning rod got hit, and if so, what the amount and duration of the power influx was. You can, be interesting to test. Yeah, you can you can use it to uh, like flash fill batteries or something. Well, batteries. Oh, it would be batteries interesting. It would be pretty cool if you had like a big thunderstorm and your batteries were like at twenty percent, and you had like you know racks of them, and then one lightning hit and it sort of supercharged all of them one hundred percent. So that would be pretty yeah. cool, I think. Well, the advanced batteries have a charge a charge rate of what three k. Six on a, a higher rate than the uh, standard battery packs, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. Something to test out at some point again in a uh, hard mode open world, easier because huh, more severe storms, this more line. Mm -hmm. uh, added new hexagon modifier icons. We have the square ones. Well, apparently, we get uh, hexagon ones as well. Maybe to specify uh, a specific type of uh, modifier. I don't know, like a positive versus negative. I don't know. Could be, yeah. Hmm. But it has to be like something special for the new zone. But it says added new hexagon modifier. Yeah, it doesn't say exactly if it's been deployed yet. So it could just be that it's intended for a new status, perhaps, or debuff, or like you mentioned above. So it could be. Yeah, well, the new zone is already on the closed beta. Yeah. Not on experimental, but on closed beta. I mean, they're a bit already, but they're making so much changes there. Like, the gameplay today is going to be quite different from the gameplay tomorrow, so I haven't played yeah. it yet. Yeah. Understandable. The next one is interesting. Remove player tracker module from workshop. Now, back in the day when this one was introduced, uh, there uh, players were not, by default, not being shown on the map. I believe you had a talent at that point even for it. Yep. Um, 
Or was this only in certain missions where it was not shown? No, no. Something no, no, it was, it, was in, it was in all missions. It was in all missions because we tried to still see if it was on the HUD, but I think you could see them on the... I remember it was just very buggy. We couldn't get it to work. We couldn't figure out what was the intended design or the thing to work, at least from my perspective. But my point on this is more the fact that they're removing the item from the workshop, which means it's no longer possible to obtain it. So what happens to the people that actually purchased it? Does that become a limited item or does it actually get removed from their inventory as well? I don't know. One of the things. Now, one, this module was at that point intended to actually show players on the map. We never figured out exactly how it how it works, does one need to have it, does everyone need to have it, who's going to be visible on the map, the one uh, wearing the tracker or is the one wearing the, uh, the module, is it the one who actually sees the other people on the map, we never figured it out uh, fully, but, uh, but the need is now being removed, so I reckon in uh, preparation for the null sector, Whereas, like, nothing shown on the map except uh, except for your trail beacons. Yeah, could be, yeah. That makes sense as well. But that also, like I said, it and, raises and the question, what happens to if, if people already had it? Indeed. What happens to people who already have this module? Spend the resources. Mm. Yeah. I mean, not a whole lot of resources, but still. No, but even then, yeah. It is an item in your inventory, so... What's going to happen? Is, is going to like stop working at all? Is the functionality being removed as well? So it being a uh, yeah, because they could have just they could have just easily just made it so that the item or the module would not function in the new zone. It's like oh, due to the severe interactions or limitations or static or whatever particles, quantum particles in the air that it causes it to not function. You know, you could always yeah. insert some sort of uh, reason then, for it. Then you will have players who are like. Hey, I bought this uh, player tracker module specifically for the null sector, and now it's not working there. Fair, fair. That's uh, also a good point. In order to prevent that, like completely removed from the workshop, I can understand. I see the logic there. Yep, same here. Uh, right, edit red graphics to run the image for the V button. Uh, yeah, basically the debut on the image. So, comfort, red exotics to run. Uh, do not list existing prospects when new is clicked. Because what's confusing people, you have to use the load button for this. So, I think that's to do with the first bullet point here, open maybe, the open world drop selection. I don't know. Well, now it's more the drop collection, like you already chose new, and then you said, okay, open world, this map, and then the where to drop. Hmm. But yeah, uh, new, uh, if I click like new, I don't want to see the existing ones. Kind of makes sense. <laughs> so, yeah. Here's something. Update the starter torches to repair with sticks instead of wood, as wood is not in the original. I never repaired the torch. Me neither. I didn't even know you could. I. That's a good point. And the fact that it would use wood when you actually use sticks to craft it is actually a fair like mix-up or mess-up. So that's, yeah, that's yeah. surprising that things still slip through your radar, considering the amount that you've played. Yeah, so, again, yeah. I just off a new one. I throw out the old one uh, or like wait till it's completely burnt yeah. up or I exactly. like it's almost gone and I yeah, just one. chuck it. But yeah, exactly. currently you can repair them which should be right. uh, cheaper. Normally it shouldn't be a problem. However, <laughs> yeah. if you're in a uh, sticks scarce area i.e. Uh, desert is my it's nice that you can actually uh, repair your torch. Definitely something I have to not, look into at some point. Well, not that you can, you know, not that when you would have spent wood on it, but now that you would spend the same material. Now, the question is, is that 
usually repairing takes like one item i'm not sure how many sticks it would actually can take to actually repair it and whether or not you just right click repair because you wouldn't want to craft a bench for it i mean that would be silly because you uh, could yeah, just craft you a new one you repair person, it where you craft it which is on your person exactly all right so i've yeah, never seen i can't recall right clicking it and then seeing a repair or something i never really inspected it but anyway new one. but like the, the wooden hammer you repair it in your inventory. Uh, mm -hmm. Breaker, you repair it in your inventory. All your stone tools, you repair it in your inventory. You repair it where you make it. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it was interesting. Like, I did not know, I gen generally did not know you could repair them. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Next one is also nice for you. Yeah, did a part from building piece resource costs, ensuring the half size pieces cost half the amount as the full size counterparts. Makes sense. Uh, yep. So, yeah, I'm glad they. Angle groove pieces. Did it, yeah. You know, yeah. Reforms, those things. Hey, so that's more like a quarter. Welcome. I hope you uh, have been working. I hope your game is going well. Well, it's patch notes, the Friday night patch notes. Uh, since I'm on vacation uh, for a couple more weeks, <laughs> no gameplay for me. Uh, but yeah, once I'm back, I will definitely continue the gameplay. Uh, finally got the drills, so I've been trying to mine ore. They, they're going to be a nice change uh, if you finally get the, get the drills running. Uh, biofuel is already a big improvement, and especially once you switch to the electric ones, then you, you'll be like swimming in resources. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, happy to read you got your drills working. It's definitely going to make uh, grinding your resources uh, less time consuming. And so your whole uh, evolving and taking up is going to speed up. Uh, okay, let's see. Adding a product exchange button so that is stock is can be exchanged for RAM. We talked about that already. Upgrade hammer functionality added for the reinforced glass building tier. As promised last week, it's now been added. Ah, they added salt. And oh no, I don't like the next one. I, Sorry? I don't like that one. I don't like that one. Well, it kind of makes sense, you know, adding salt. It does. I know it does. It does. But it breaks my quick hacks of making pickled carrots and pickled tomatoes for quick and easy food. So now that you have to have salt and water, and that means you need to have uh, a continuum off your suit into your item thing. Yeah, you already <laughs> needed uh, glass jars anyway. No, I know, yeah, but I'm not talking about the glass. I'm talking about the fact that it was just, okay, fine, put the carrots in the glass jar and craft. Now I would need to take some salt. Okay, that's not a big deal. But the biggest, the biggest, the biggest pain in the backside is, is that I have to take my damn canteen out of my freaking water slot again oh. and put it into the damn crafting table again and then do the craft thing and then remember to pick it up and I leave. No, it's a kitchen bench, first of all, not a crafting bench. Second, you just hook it up to your water network. Oh, yeah, everyone has a water network. Oh, exactly. Silly me. Yeah, if to fix the housing issue, just buy a house. Duh. Yeah, it's so easy. Yeah, of course. I know, right? Yeah. You just hook it up yeah. to the water network, and there you go. All you need to do is like, yeah. hold. Of course. Huh. What am I possibly thinking? Overcomplicating things. Yeah, oh, okay. Easy. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, salt and water. Kind of makes yeah. sense, you know, making part of the whole of all the picking, picking in yeah. the draw, you, yeah. you sold it makes it more yeah. stuff. So, yeah, makes more sense. Uh, added half stairs to all the half piece variations. Now, notice it's half stairs, not the corner stairs. Those are only added for interior wood and the stone, and added to the ramp variations. So, yeah. Uh, Interior wood and stone only, so stone for outside ish until they added the concrete variant. Uh, all doors, windows, trapdoors, and fence gates now use 
fixed bounce size. This should prevent assets from flickering when on the edge of the screen. Do I ever have I ever encountered this? I don't know. Not that I recall straight away. Hmm. Maybe it's a lot because I move too fast, I don't know. And I like I usually don't look at like the edges of the screen, I like look like the center of the screen. Mm. Uh, New resource has been added to shotgun casing. Shotgun ammo recipes now use the shotgun casing as the base instead of the standard ammo casing. And splitting out the shotgun slug into its own blueprint and change the recipe so it no longer requires buckshot for creation. These three we talked about before. So. Uh, almost all the time, so I'm going to look. Hope you have a great team. Thank you. Uh, enjoy your dinner. And uh, thanks for popping up. Let's see, this plan has no longer ticks. We talked about this. Notable improvements. Uh, well, I have a couple of decent sized bases, so I do wonder how much of a uh, performance improvement I'll see when I come back from vacation. Gonna be interesting. Yeah. Uh, change modifier background icon shape and added medic backpack modifier icon. Um, so it looks like they changed all the modifier icons. And the. Should be the hexagonal uh, thing exactly. that they talked about earlier. Yeah. yeah. So they added a new hexagon one. So all the uh, uh, modifier icons now have like a hexagon shape. And now if you carry the medic backpack, uh, I believe it gives some increased resistance to your teammates against like uh, cave lung uh, and, and, and as such. And uh, been a while since I've read the uh, best of this medic backpack. And also when you get revived, you get a bit more health, stuff like that. But yeah, the... Uh, Apparently, you never uh, had the modifier icon if you are close to a medic backpack. So now you should. Good, good. Next one is interesting as well. An added grazing behavior to mounts and tames. You need to uh, enable it via talent, so you will need to spend a talent point on your mount or tame to actually get the grazing behavior. But this is something uh, we've talked about before, like, hey, you feed them berries. They're right next to a berry bush. Why aren't they eating straight from the bush? Mm -hmm. Now, if you uh, give me the grazing talent, it also should mean uh, you need less animal food. Especially handy if you have a lot of animals. It depends on if, because if you imagine if you have it in the volcanic zone, do they still graze in the volcanic zone, the zone eating the dirt on the ground, or is it just uh, so would it just be a random idle animation, or would it be as you said, would it be oh, he's gonna quickly go trot off to the cornfield and eat some corn, or if it's like just animation? If it's like if you say okay, you can wander around here, it's like tethered to this point. Then if there is anything to eat within that radius, then it's going to go there to eat. I think that's over-engineering. I think it's just basically an idle animation to stop the hunger or something like that from decaying. So it's basically, yeah, your animals don't get hungry. So oh. other than, you know, they'll still get, you know, hungry slightly, but when you're using them, but maybe when they're an idle, um, that they don't become, you know, starving, burning through your food supplies. Now, if they are going after the berry bushes and such, will it consume the berries from the bush? I. Uh, that's a good question. If, I don't if know. If you set them to graze, will they like uh, clean out the entire area of veggies? The berries, yeah, for example. That's a good question. Gonna be interesting. If it did, 
Uh, if you did, it would actually be very close to real life because if you leave your door open and your horse can go into your garden, be prepared that your garden is going to be destroyed entirely. So, yes. So, now, unfortunate, a couple of weeks ago, I did take out the uh, uh, soybean bushes right in front of my solar base, otherwise, I could have tested it out there. Additional question How about if you plant uh, fetches in mounds? And like you, well, actually, that I can test because I still have at least one of them in front of my uh, my solo base. So if you uh, create a dirt mound and you plant uh, uh, soybeans in there, will your animals go up to it and like eat it from there? I don't know, but I see one of your questions was uh, answered, so we'll get there. Okay. Um, anyway. Adding concept of positive and negative auras. Instead of setting up code so that modifier backgrounds can be easily changed. Yeah, especially uh, with positive and negative auras. Uh, for example, green and red backgrounds. Uh, modifying the medic backpack to only provide one aura and one aura effect. Uh, it's a combination of the three from before. Uh, so three aura effects now all combined into one. Uh -huh. uh, set player dropships icon max composition to 100 meter and uh, this ties in with uh, last week's uh, Mounts are only shown up on the herd if you're within like 50 meters or so. The yep. chip is now yep. Yep. Oh. Makes sense. Uh, set default grazing behavior to none to prevent animals from grazing until they're told to do so. So, so will there be a new state? Like you have stay, you have lie, you have follow, you have wander. Possibly now we get a fifth one, Grace. Yep. Once again, you uh, have enabled it via the talents or via the skill. Eh. Uh, better powered lantern now does not go out when you're on the water. I've talked about that one before. Shotgun casings, no craftable. Good. Thanks for adding it. <laughs> so I'm glad you uh, actually made them comfortable as well. Uh, added railing functionality to half stairs. <laughs> yes, but will it be to both sides? Because I do recall back in the day, long, long time ago, where was it on the wooden stairs or on the stone stairs? You actually could only place railings on one of the sides. Can't remember. I do. I ran into it a couple of times. Man. Let's hope that they've learned from their past mistakes. Let's hope so. Uh, adding in water container and jerrycan uh, recover oh. materials for biofuel and petroleum. Petroleum is new. Huh. Hmm. Yeah, we have not had petroleum before. Yeah, because petroleum indicates vehicles. Yeah. Uh, possibly, possibly. Although it's usually used for burning, not so much for combustion. And petroleum lights, but also petroleum heaters, etc. Yeah. Yeah, possible. Oh, let's see what we have to fix it wise. No, they replaced the hunter chest piece with a new one. Uh, last week they or I were talking about, actually last two weeks I believe, 
uh, the new Hunter uh, armor pieces. Uh, the chest piece has been replaced as well. Um, remove the light burst from trail beacons. Uh, no sector thing, so this comes from, uh, from close beta. To stop excessive use of fertilizing audio events, is the player using hundreds of beacons. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a very big noise. Especially if you play them close together. Uh, lowered opacity as well as the high detail and roughness for the wire rate and the tempered blast textures. As requested by Dean. Uh, yeah. I haven't been able to test out the tempered glass yet, so I don't know how it looks, nor do I know how it looks like now. Yeah. Uh, let's see, fixed ensure that was being triggered by lava flyer having a start reapplied on thick. Lava flyer again. Not something we have in the current game. So it's either a non sector animal or it's something for the new DLC. That's not clear from this line. Yeah, having stuff reapplied. Yeah. Also, don't know which stats, etc. So, thanks for the info. And some light optimizations. It was in notable improvements as well. Creature deterrence map areas are no longer showing on the compass. Oh, well, you didn't really need them now. So, no longer plug and have your compass there. Okay, good. Uh, fix an issue where cats would not appear to sleep on beds properly for clients. Again, if you're playing on a dedicated server, you're by definition a client. Um, let's see, in my solo open world, I do have a cat on Prometheus, I don't have one on uh, Styx though. Uh, yeah, I haven't, I don't recall I haven't seen it sleep on the bed very often indeed. Okay, let's see, added a more generic way of realizing Pre-built structures, uh, electricity and water networks should now be supported, as well as more complex deployable slash container slash foundation configurations. So the pre-built structures for missions are becoming more advanced. So imagine you run a mission, an operation, and uh, you have to visit a location, there is a base with a functioning power and water network. You can grab that stuff. Or you just keep the buildings there uh, if you do this an operation from your open world. So you can use it as a forward operating base. And it already has power and water. I like that. Yeah. Also, foundation, meaning bigger buildings possible. Cool, cool. Uh, reduce tick frequency for building based dirty tick events. Uh, oh, this must be the uh, building pieces tick event thing you just talked about in the uh, notebook. Well, it's just covering the same stuff almost, so it's, it's I, fixed the it's existing things. So. Yeah, where well, I postulated it being like the. Uh, Structural integrity uh, calculations. Well, that's yeah. They reduced uh, as the new feature was reducing the cost or the yeah. the frequency to save performance. So, yeah. Also added a random offset to ensure building pieces don't all take on the same frame on game reloads. Yeah. yeah. No, it's if, you, if if you if you start up something like that, then yeah, it's going to obviously be. Uh, you have big the performance base. hit if you schedule everything at the same time to start. That's why you stagger things. That's why you get the micro freezes. 
if you have them all do the calculate the, the ticks on the same frame. Yeah. So yeah, indeed. Random offset. Good. Uh, notify the get hard stability part of the blueprint for the building base. Get hard stability. Okay. Um, hooking up portable biofuel back mesh. Ah, this must be the, uh, the, the new 150 liter thing, which you use yep. which you carry in your G-slot. And then it appears to be on your back uh, if you're into a person. Uh, fix the number of typos. Always handy. Tempered glass. Adjust the material settings and albedo texture to mitigate fractal fog effect. They actually mentioned this uh, before as well, yeah. Good. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Removed wood rack torch and wood flare repair materials. As, as these should not be possible to repair. Hold on, so go on talking about wood rack torch. Is that the one you cast the like the basic torch? And what was the other one called? Um, is it the wooden torch? What was it mentioned? Uh, I don't know, was it in new content? Yeah, a starter torches. What's the difference then? I mean, the starter torches can be repaired by uh, with sticks as per the new content. Now we're talking yeah, but that was. But I'm not sure if that was, I thought that was just a normal torch, a wood yeah, torch. Like was good. But now I see the word wood rack torch. Then I'm like, is this the one actually you craft in your inventory? And the wooden torch being the one you craft, I don't know, in the, in the crafting bench? The, the, the but, wall torches? Uh, yeah, also possible wall torches. But then again, no, there's a deployable. Deployables you repair with a repair hammer. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Now there is a torch actually, which you carry on your belt, but which uses uh, sulfur to craft. But yeah, it's maybe those you can repair. No idea, but yeah, it kind of would make sense though. And then the wood rack torch, which you only use sticks and fiber to craft, that you can't repair those. But you can then repair the one which you use a uh, sulfur for to craft. Now, and the wooden flare. Um, not sure what they're talking about. Wooden flare, though. I don't know. Anyway, uh, fix, Faction Mission Radar not being able to be activated on dedicated server. Uh, now, I never had an issue where I could not activate it. I had issues, plural, multiple operations, where when I was playing on the dedicated server, I could not play them because there was no snip -out. I had to like abandon the, the operation, move the prospect file to local, to my local PC, run it from there, restart the operation, and then it was showing me the uh, samples. And I'm not the only one. Uh, multiple people are uh, talking about it on, uh, on Discord. So, yeah, and like this uh, workaround works for everyone. Um, I never had an issue where I could place it, but not activate it. So 
I don't know, if they say uh, not being able to be activated, I hope they mean <laughs> that the, 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 the uh, ghost image where you can like put it down, not showing. I hope this is what they fixed yeah. Uh, added from a dedicated server checks to prevent cosmetic only logic being run on the server. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. Okay, let's see. Fix wrong material ID for the destructible mesh on the building roof corner left wood. <laughs> so it gets damaged and all of a sudden it shows it like, I don't know, <laughs> aluminum or something. That would be weird. It's not the call. No. Yeah. Uh, fixed radar not being able to be activated on dedicated server or when a host wasn't looking. I think it might be tying in with the one, uh, fish one. Such as us, yeah. <laughs> uh, Mount CT has been uh, resaved. Not sure why, but apparently it's needed. Uh, increased initial delay variance on the first BP building base, dirty thick. That's the fix or improvements. So. And you know when, uh, well, I don't know if you know, but if you like load in your prospect, you're inside your base and then you hear the creaking and cracking all around you and you're like, oh, yeah. I hope all the calculations are being completed before things start falling down. Yes, I know that. I've actually had it where I had this, uh, I'd done this mission where I had to build like this, uh, uh, this lookout tower seven stories above the floor for an operation. Well, a couple of uh, episodes later, a couple of streams later, I returned to that tower, so I ran up the stairs, opened the door, ran in and fell through the floor because there was no floor no more. Directly behind the behind the door, I was like, "Oops!" Luckily, I didn't. Die. Yeah. <laughs> I was happy for that, but I fell like seven, eight stories down. <laughs> uh, yeah, I... and that's not the worst. I've heard people who lost like uh, benches and stuff, even. Yeah. I mean, we've had it before where, you know, the item would just crash, but uh, it's yeah. the same thing where if you've obviously re replaced the item with something on top of it where it recalculates, but yeah, like I said, that's a good fix. Yeah. Added data and witches for a new mountain theme grazing behavior. We we'll talked about this grazing already. Mm -hmm. uh, prevent some items that aren't repairable from being initially listed when repair all is clicked on the repair bench. I like this function, by the way. Just make sure you have enough uh, resources in your repair bench. And you like click the repair all, and like everything is being repaired. Everything except your armor. There's a different button: repair armor. The repair all is basically everything you're carrying, uh, which can be repaired will be repaired if there is the uh, if there is the resource. the resource is well most, yeah. but yeah uh, if there are items that are not repairable it should not uh, show in the list like it tells you like these are the items that uh, need repair these are the items that can be repaired this is like the materials it's gonna cost yeah, if you have like the uh, the wood rack torch, it should not be listed on your repair bench if you can't repair it. So I'm glad they fixed that. Makes it a little less confusing. Uh, let's see. Object is run of fuel, hydrogen, water, or oxygen as a resource in a container. Now I have new icons to show the resource type. Tooltip also been updating so it's more readable. Instead of using the default Unreal Engine 4 tooltip text. Well, we talked about this one already. Uh, allow dropping of items onto the bags. Seat pouch, metal satchel to place them inside. Talk about it. Next one as well. When there's a bag, uh, well, sorry, when the bags, seat pouch, metal satchel, etc., are focused, 
i.e. on the hotbar and just like right click to open. Uh, increase desert flames heat tolerances. Well, they've been talking about like uh, finally doing something with like flames and biomes, mounds and biomes. Interesting is that apparently the MOA is considered a desert flame. Um, the MOA is, in my mind, a little bit of an ostrich. An ostrich isn't really like a woodlands or forest creature. So, yeah, it is more of a savannah-ish type of creature. So, I would say that makes sense to me. And it does mean that when they continue, it will continue. When, when they like, implement, implement forward, like and by a specific person debuffs, the MOA is no longer an all-round fast mount because it's going to be slow in uh, in uh, Arctic one. Mm -hmm. Now, keep keeping that in mind, and then the null sector having only two biomes: volcanic and ice, volcanic and Arctic. Which mount are you going to use? My Neves mount. So I'd say uh, the horse is becoming more viable as an all round. Still decent speed mount, and one which can uh, extend both Arctic and volcanic. Yeah, I mean, most likely. I mean, makes sense. Well, it does mean, again, that. You're gonna to have to think a little bit more about like where am I going, which month am I gonna take? I like that actually. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Fixed charging station lights being lit when the device is turned off. Fizzle bar for immersion, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, in stick shifted an alpha wolf spawner slightly to avoid clipping with rocks. Good, good. Uh, increase temperature lenient on Arctic teams slightly to allow use in forest biomes. Especially because I reckon most of the people build their uh, bases in forest slash grasslands, which is the Prometheus equivalent of forest biomes, because they like a eh, moderate biome. Uh, so you basically have to travel through the forest to the Arctic. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm glad Arctic things can be used proper in uh, forest biomes. Uh, explosive ammo crafting being adjusted to use one volatile substance per five ammo instead of one and one. Talked about that. Uh, unlock field guide by default on development builds. Well, uh, <laughs> development builds. The word already says enough. We don't play in development builds. Uh, adding new path on broken windows to move into more mesh race approach. Five frames included. Uh, the, the mesh for the damaged window piece, I reckon. Yeah, but it's also nice to add different variations so you don't have the same uh, art on the same glass. So it actually has a little bit of a difference cracking, which actually makes a big, uh, well, a lot of sense. And actually, would actually do a lot of the, uh, you know, I mean, maybe different. Obviously, it has to have different meshes for the different levels of it being damaged. But I was kind of hoping that it would be, you know, like a different crack here, a star pattern over there more random or not like random but like a random uh, mesh pattern of each of the stages so it doesn't all just look the same it's like yeah. it looks different it feels different kind of it feels fresh vibrant but i doubt it's that so i totally agree and the wild animals no longer attempt to drink from water bodies with creature deterrent radius so yeah, creature deterrent, well, it's not a spawn blocker as such, but like if you put it next to the river, uh, 
Wild animals normally would stay away because, eh, creature deterrent, until they get thirsty and they're like, yeah, I don't care about your deterrent no more, I want to drink. They still came yep. away. And they still want to mm -hmm. take your base, etc. So at least this should be fixed by now. Uh, fixed back where the how many shots did you count talent was granting ammo to the wrong player on dedicated servers. We've had that before. Um, Not so much of the talent where if we if I shot a, an arrow that it would appear in your inventory or something like yeah, that. Yeah, we we're talking about so like arrows. It was, uh, it was switch arrows, and then it was like, oh, okay. Suddenly it was into your inventory, or something yeah. to that effect, so yeah. So somehow we teleported uh, ammo to mm. the uh, inventory first. Yes. Something we have abused on occasion, where I was stuck in the Arctic and needing uh, fiber, and this was in uh, Olympus, so no fiber in the Arctic. I was there defending again, I believe, uh, 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 an exotics mining operation there. So I had to folks <laughs> teleport the arrows towards me so I could uh, destroy them, so I got an arrow, so I could, could make a rope, so I could destroy it, so I got fiber. And also, hey, if you run out of ammo, uh, and you don't have materials to craft new, that way you could, like, <laughs> get ammo to the host. We didn't do it often, though, but if you misused it once or twice. So, where are we fixing that? What is the fixing that? The Hellman Shosti Code talent was refunding the current amount of ammo player had in the loaded weapon instead of a single unit. So. Yeah, like a uh, uh, turn shotgun with eight shells. You shoot one, the talent kicks in, and instead of giving you one shell back in your inventory, it gives you like eight shells back. Oops. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, but again, <laughs> glad I fixed that, because it shouldn't. Yeah. Uh, the replacing jerry can water backpack sound with a more generic top container sound rather than water flushing until the water level within the uh, blueprint can be worked out. Of course, they're actually planning on changing the audio depending on the water level. That's going to be cool. Makes sense. I mean, the generic sound for usually picking up, you know, in most, you know, RPG games or games in general, if you pick up a Jericho can, it's like the usual typical metal sloshing water sound inside of it. And very few of them, I think in uh, Metro Exodus, there is like, if you pick up an empty one, because the mission gives you duds, then you don't hear the sloshing. So it's like, uh, there, there is a slight audio cue which, yet again, sound plays a big role in immersion. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Uh, adding quirks, deploy audio for the biofuel in a water tank. Also correcting other wrong deploy audio sounds for new items. Load the jack and pick up audio slightly. Again, audio change is very important to have proper audio. And then we get to our... Favorite part, future content. Skipping, are, yeah, skimming through it, because <laughs> yeah. it's a long one. But there are a couple of very, very, very interesting items in here, I'm telling you. Well, well let's see if we can get through it. I mean, I don't want to, I mean. I, 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 I. Ape bot balloon trophy. Um, it's added to balloon the trophy. Part. Oh, so you have to like. Cast it in, in three stages or something, I don't know. But balloon, interesting. interesting. Balloon trophy, that's interesting, yeah. It's a lot of interesting words in that one. I think in electric motor to use with non-sector hmm. mission. Currently just a backpack item that can be picked up or dropped, so no additional functionality. Uh, Playing around with something. Okay. Electric motor. That's already... Yeah. 
interesting, but it might be like yeah, it yeah. gets better. Trust me, it gets better. Okay, we'll see. Fix his no sector missions. Ash stranded in Ashland, so it gives you some idea of what mission names would be, but yeah. And composition being capitalized tells you it's a mission name as well, most likely. Yeah, 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 that is you know, like because I said there would be new mission types as well. So maybe and, and like the, the more elaborate missions, multi stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, black distance fog plane on the ice sheet. We added fog color on the ice sheet on atmosphere control. So well, they said that they were able to add a modern plate of fog colors. So, yeah, going to be interesting. Now, yeah. next one, right? Planet Island. Adding ability to interact with various elements of the truck. Truck, yeah. And that's that's the thing. The the fact that you also got this audio cue for cherry cans and yeah. like they had petroleum because that was yeah. the f fuel thing yet again so uh, the truck. saying truck so yeah there's Adding going to be new a, recipes for alternator and radiator yeah to fix it because that's obviously going to be a mission item to fix the alternator and radiator so and then you have to fill it up to go and drive further yeah also, so it sounds like that's a mission. just that npcs so they play dialogue using the correct system what, there could be people there Ooh, in the truck? There's going to be people there, yeah. That's an interesting one. Hmm? That I haven't actually seen. I mean, I enjoyed, obviously, listening to Saul, um, but you never actually saw any other prospectors other than those that dropped down with you. So you never encountered uh, another person. Um, I, told you I was actually kind of, you know, other than the left behind, quote-unquote, but yeah. I told you this is going to be interesting. Yeah, it's okay. This, one. I mean, this it's, one it, it just tells us that there's only mission here. Yeah. This one bullet point. But I already had a lot of interesting stuff. It has, it does, it definitely does. But I already had the feeling that they would introduce something with a vehicle based thing because they had the comment about the patrol there. So, well, it, it uh, has been requested since Olympus. And of course, uh, but now it's got a more reason for it because mounts fitted with the previous ones, and now that the elements become quite harsh, that if you had the resources and the capabilities and the tech, they were planning on adding vehicles uh, uh, mm -hmm. in the on the website of Acres. In this one video, you actually do see a buggy uh, racing towards a drop pod, but yes, arriving too late. Um, but at some point, they were like, yeah, you know, it's not going to work. The train is not suitable enough for motorized vehicles. Kind of makes sense, especially in forest. Uh, it would be viable in desert sea uh, environments, though, or in volcanic, of course. Eh? Lots of open fields. Also viable in uh, Arctic. But, uh, yeah, they said, yeah, no, it's not. you know what, we're going to like that. Uh, uh, no, it's, like I said, it makes sense. But that's that's a lot of topic points, so it seems good. Yeah. So, uh, maybe uh, we will get yeah, like, I don't know, maybe we have to repair it and then drive on or something. Yeah. I don't know. That's 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 what the mission is going to be about, but I think that's pretty much it. That's that's gonna be a bit that's gonna be a mission. Gonna it's gonna be, be an NPC there. Yes, but it seems like that's going to be the case, which is good because it does branch off into a different direction, which would be a surprise if there was an actual NPC that you came across in this blacked out, dark null sec zone kind of thing. But yeah, it's, it's a good thing. Like, and I think. And apparently, NPCs which play dialogue are no. Uh, yeah. Characters, yeah, characters. It would be nice to have a, a, you know an NPC in your base, for example, because it would you know you could with the dogs and the cats and everything like that as well. And you never know what, what you'll be able to build, but yep. Interesting, a lot of interesting stuff in one single bullet point. I like it. Yep. 
Mm, see, oh, yeah. Hemel Buffer, Earthquake Golem. Mm. Yeah. Added White Eyes to player effect opponents and in game Weatherman. So White Eyes. Yeah. Uh, I don't like the fact that they're going to bring Hornets to the game. Um, yeah, these like Hornets, uh, Torn Wing, Hornets, Stinger, etc. All those uh, animal, uh, part animal stuff. Uh, I posted in, in, in another your personal yeah. question a couple of weeks ago uh, that this might actually be something for the next uh, DLC. So okay. not for this expansion, but for the next DLC. And like with a whole uh, uh, research center uh, top side. Uh, uh, in in mining truck extra pass to use in NullSec missions. Mining truck. Exactly, mining truck. Mm, that gives you a description of the truck. It, it, it did say interacting with the truck. So yeah. definitely putting in min mining or materials would make sense as well. Uh, or maybe just uh, the interact thing is just being like, hey, you have to repair this, you have to repair that to get it running again and yeah, to get the of course, yeah. expedition back on track. Uh, true, but it's a mining truck. So yeah, it's, it, oh, it could be a, it could be a, it could be like one of those big, um, one of those dump trucks, basically. So yeah, that might be the indication. It's a mining sure. truck. It might be one of those big cats. You know, those massive things. We yeah. literally like we did drop down to gather resources before it broke. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, mm -hmm. And we have PM um, to the icebreaker bone, so they play the right footsteps when walked on. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not a wall mounted whiteboard. Interesting. It's yeah. probably like for the mission, like this, like yeah. planning, and probably parts of the so. NPC but, interaction mission, even perhaps. So. As well as finish part two of flag checking for custom flagpole mesh. Well, I'm gonna be able to like uh, put in custom flags or something. Well, flag yeah, that sounds flagpole. good. Yeah, yeah, sounds pretty good. Be interesting. Hmm. Yeah, radiator and materials to use for the the Nordic mission is gonna be the mining trick one. Mm -hmm. Um. Fixing the again, there's like I can build for the edition. Yeah. yeah, well, it's basically the tr the truck map icon, so it's fixed. So it's yeah, so it's just there's probably going to be the usual icons on the map where you have to go fetch yeah. things. So, and bullet point below, yeah, adding animation to MCs, adding new truck map icon, updating mm -hmm. medical scanner UI. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a bus being repaired, so it's fine. Yeah, so adding the quest flag bulletins for fixing or crafting the alternator in, uh, probably in the fabricator. Yeah, that works a bit. I think so the quest flag is in the database, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, but it's like, yeah, just the, the bulletin dots. Um, Oh, we get mm. some. Gonna get some uh, simple uh, quests specifically for the north sector. Uh -huh. What's an in Ignari? Uh, Ignari is the uh, uh, the slug in the in the volcanic biome. Oh, the, oh yeah, yeah, it's a slug in the volcanic biome. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Drifting kit. Oh, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the, uh, yeah, that's the advanced version of, yeah. of the, of the uh, bandage, so like, uh, yeah. dress wounds, deep wounds, but also, yeah, yeah, fire. yeah, yeah. So exactly. Yeah, that was the, the thing which makes sense because mm -hmm. they're increasing the costs, apparently. I don't know what it was, but yeah. Okay. Uh, Remove limit for amount of bunker lockers that can be placed side by side. Bunker lockers, yeah. As I said, the one above it, there's an opening bunker locker in game. Uh, Mark, so if you want to yeah. So I'm assuming there's going to be bunkers of some sort, which makes sense as well because it's uh -huh. a very 
hostile environment. So it could be like, because the next one is like, yeah, adding a bunker local set, setup and material support, oh, snapping okay. in with each other. Actually, now I'm Rotation. thinking about yeah. it. Um, wasn't there a bullet point below where it's like bunker is like a code name for something new? Or it's called uh, some map or whatever called bunker. Mm. So, yeah. Maybe, but it could also be, I mean, it could be for anything, but it's like, uh, what's this? This is, yeah. Uh, being so, okay. New methods of serializing people's structures now supposed being spawned at a generated work location. So less uh, risk on of a player already having built something in that specific location. Cool. And another bulletin full of things, another for the missions, where I think these are kind of very big spoilers. I should kind of not put these in there, to be honest. Yeah. Because um, this is like the timer only counts down until you've provided A to all the crew members. Crew members. Yeah, those NPCs. Uh, yeah, the NPCs, but it's a crew and there's multiple of them. So, you know, yeah, it's going to be like a... So he has to provide eight, hence the medical scanner thingy. Yeah. And as the the new uh, items to use, basically, so that you fix everything in easily, so that you don't have to craft certain things. You can just patch them up easy and quickly by using the more advanced pieces, I'm assuming. I reckon, yeah. And adjusting the NPC food and oxygen and water values. So that also means that you're going to have to make sure that they have food, water, and oxygen. So, you know, running and micromanaging NPCs, which can be tedious depending on how they've implemented the system. Yep. Like, uh, make sure you bring enough of everything. Yeah, I think some extra oxygen tanks would definitely be a good idea to bring in. No, oxygen with the, well, kind of. The tier four is electro release of water. So you hooked up to the power in the water network and then it uh, generates oxygen out of water. Unfortunately, the. Uh, because I don't think there will be oxide uh, in water, the new zone. Water, uh, the H2. Anyway, that you, uh, which is like a gas, flammable gas, you cannot use, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, then again, you do need a, a connection to water to actually create the oxygen. So mm -hmm. they have the big water tanks, so it's but it again but depends on how much to uh, to uh, search for oxide, which is probably gonna be. I don't even think it's gonna be oxide. I don't think it's gonna be oxide in the zone. I would hope not, so that it really sort of pushes you. You really have to, because that's also, for example, you get the perks and uh, to reduce the oxygen usage of people around you. So you really would want to build and really, really min max builds going in there, which is really nice. I like the fact that you really, really have to know what you're doing when you're going in there. So yeah. that's that's good. So uh, expect to fail this mission a couple of times before you finally <laughs> manage to complete it. Stuff like that. I don't know. I, I mean, it's it's it might. I mean. I, We'll see, we'll see. It's definitely going to be an interesting mission, yeah. I'm telling you that. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think so, yeah. Uh, it's MC grass, in the water flows, so they require more to stabilize, and once they stabilize, they hopefully use less. Maybe, yeah, it's possible. But they should, you know, take care of themselves or possibly they go get resources themselves Maybe. and make sure it's interesting. Maybe. Uh, uh, New hell weather FX prototype. So hold on, um, hold on. Uh, so large base sign must completely clear to use as a player sign if needed. Add in medic cabinet with animations and setup. Large for instance flagpole locker. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. It is for a mission though, for no sick mission. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, all these mission things are there, but it's like yeah. Although, having said that, I have completed on a solo a six one uh, multiple operations so far, and quite a few of the items which I had to craft in inventory from uh, parts I collected during the operation, they're still in my craftable list. 
I don't have the resources because eh, you need specific parts, but I can still craft and there's still in the list of items I can craft. So I don't know, maybe this as well. And once you've completed the mission, actually, uh, basically like the the paper on bow, right? Once you complete the mission, mm -hmm. you can then craft it. So maybe we get similar after uh, completing the mission, we can then build, I don't know, the medic cabinet, and we can build uh, the uh, some kind of flagpole or something. It would be nice. Yeah, makes sense. Gives a more sense of progression and rewards for completing the missions. Uh, updating scanner, I assume the medic scanner, so you can scan other prospectors, so not only NPCs, but <coughs> other prospectors as well. Mm. Cool, cool. I like the uh, new BP for high yield deep or, ve uh, or veins. No matter for time on the blueprint, blueprint itself, it can be just as in the future. Yeah. Uh, so they're going to look different. Okay. Yeah. So player and cargo landing pads decay to not decay. So no storm damage and no damage taken, I reckon. When are yeah, we going to do something? I want those. Yeah. Yeah, that's been mentioned that for quite some time, but yeah, uh, let's see. I had it on one operation where at the port with the equipment literally landed. So close to the contact device, it was touching it. <laughs> so obviously, when it after it took off, I had to repair half my pad. Yeah. So yeah, I definitely want those pads. Uh, For an like, ape grenade. Uh, yeah, yeah, ape grenades. Well, I did the hornet stingers and the uh, hornet. Uh, uh, nice, strong knives, and further up you see, uh, uh, like, uh, ice man of arm, uh, ape fishing trap, ape, all that other stuff, I reckon, is going to be for the new DLC and not for the expansion. Oh, okay, got it, yeah. Uh, again, send up some, uh, some stuff you loot off the dead body of the big ape, send up to the space yeah, yeah. station, do some research. And then you unlock like certain items. Okay, and they updated the you know exotic creature colors from like blue to purple. Yeah, oh, exotic colors purple. So yeah. Yeah, they sense. they did uh, three two three weeks ago. They did change the color of the exotics again towards a more purpley thing. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, first part is the whiteout storms. For the ice sheets, we are definitely not going to be seeing anything anymore. Yeah, which is good. I mean, it's different. Yeah. Uh, There's many storms where you can't even put your hand in front of your face, you'll see nothing. So Exactly. So basically, blizzard like. Yeah, pretty much just stay indoors and, or huddle right. in the corner crying. Well, Ashlands, at least you're going to get some cooling weather events. Yeah. Airlines being the very hot one. And actually we have yeah. seen I've seen numbers where I'm like <coughs> Yeah, okay, uh, I might have to rethink my armor strategy. Cooling with events for the airlines good. Although preferably not during the night. Okay, like the desert I believe the airlines is also gonna have like quite low temperatures at night. But I, I can misremember, it's been a while since I wrote it. Should be similar to like, you know, well, yeah, I mean, if it's going to be like a Sahara desert type of idea where it's like freezing at night and, you know, hell on earth during the day, then yeah, we'll have to see. Right. Let's add to the extremes, because I did also mention that we're playing around with the extreme ends of the you know, mount thresholds as well, and I said the food modifiers to reduce the extremes as well. So yeah, you know, yep. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. But yeah, that it's, seems it's, like it. it's it. No sector is definitely going to be very interesting, and <laughs> the mission very interesting uh, indeed. Yeah, I think you would have to plan. Uh, 
definitely to go in prepared. Um, yep. But basically plan that you won't be able to get any resource, it sounds like, in the new zone. I'm uh, not sure, for example, yeah. that even oxide would be an option, but that might be too difficult for... Well, no, I doubt it. You know, you would just have oxygen tanks because they introduced water canisters, but have they might still introduce a larger oxygen tank, for example. I don't think so, because water has the, as well as power, it's the storage system. Oh, okay, correct. You have a, something that provides it, something that stores it, and something that consumes it. Electricity, you have the solar panel, the wind turbine, the water wheel, etc., generator, to produce power. You have the batteries to store power, and you have the benches which consume power. Same for the water network. You have like the ice water. Uh, you have the uh, water pumps. Those are providers. Then you have the barrels, which are uh, storing it. The same for the rain catchers, by the way, the metal rain catcher. It's basically storage. The same actually for the uh, water troughs you hook up to the water network, they are considered storage. And then you have like consuming, say, the kitchen benches and such. Uh, the tier 4 uh, observe uh, creator, I think. Those kind of things. The kitchen tables, yeah, everything. So there is no such thing for oxygen. So, Create a very big oxygen tank, which you can then use to fill small oxygen tanks. No, I don't think so. I think for oxide, you will have to rely on bring a ton of water, uh, set up your base, hook up the uh, tier four oxygen machine, hook it up to your water storage and to a power network, and generate your oxygen that way. Yeah. Now, obviously, you could do the uh, boring way and extend your power and water network all the way into the null sector and actually to be honest at some point if i make a forward operating base there i might actually do it just so i don't have to haul along all water and food and stuff like that especially water but yeah we will see Yep. We'll see. Well, these were the patch notes. Yep. Uh, That's it for today. I'll say uh, thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. So there was definitely a lot of topic points to cover, a lot of insights into the new mission. I do think that uh, they shouldn't try and spot too many things because it would have been nice to sort of stumble across a couple of these things and, uh, you know, uh, you know, just get a surprise for, you know, somebody suddenly moving there or, you know, walking up behind you, tapping you on the shoulder and suddenly you have an interaction of like an NPC, which would be quite, uh, you know, out of the norm for uh, a prospector, so. In one side, I agree. On the other side, you can also see this as a teaser instead of a spoiler. Mm, true, true. But yeah, they they do uh, disclose some information already, although things are subject to change. Like true, you can, still can completely. Uh, it can, and as I said, it didn't tell us what, you know, they would be saying and what the mission objectives are and all these things, but, you know, going from, oh, yeah, it's a solo mission to, wow, we get, you know, possibly NPCs to take care of or help around the base or missions and trucks and all these things. I mean, it's definitely, uh, like I said, a teaser to a large extent as well, um, but... Uh, yeah, I, I am afraid once you fix the truck and once you get them some food and water and stuff, they're going to be like, thank you, we're driving off now. Bye. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then they drive. I wouldn't be surprised, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. But it would also be interesting that it would also be a, a logical progression towards 
a sort of because I mean they introduce cats and dogs and pets and turrets and all these things and I don't know if you've played Fallout 4 but it pretty much it's like you know very much like chain building supply kind of orientated thing where you build bases and you put up supplies between them and that you have settlers that sort of start to live in these locations which you can equip food and ammo and gear and armor and all these things for which basically changes the the game quite dramatically when you're just like a single player versus then a semi you know so, yeah, I, I know the, kind the of game game mechanics cool. yeah yeah but yeah but it's it's very nice yeah. and the patch notes were good quite, I, I don't uh, think it's going that way though no, I doubt it. I doubt it. It doesn't suit the the uh, the lore or the type of you know direction we'll go into. But at the very least, having the mission objectives to sort of play around with the theory isn't a bad idea because you never know what the future might actually hold. True, true. But yeah. Anyway, it's getting late from my side, so I am going to wish you a pleasant evening and. Thank you. Uh, okay. I enjoy the rest of your holiday and I'll okay. chat to you probably next week. All right. All righty. All right. Thank you. And this concludes our stream for this week. Uh, again, no gameplay today because huh? being on vacation, etc. Um, Next week we'll be here again at uh, like 9.30 British summer time uh, with uh, the next weekly business discussion. Um, I thank everyone who is here, who is lurking, who is participating in chat. Very much appreciated. Uh, so yeah, thanks for being here and I hope I'll see you around next time.